So to go kind of more on a personal note a little bit, you know, you mentioned your dad a handful of times, and I'm sure growing up uh, you got this question a lot, but obviously your dad, highly successful drag racer, you're racing the World of Outlaws, circle track. What kind of led you to go this path? Daniel Soski was a huge part of it. Um, you know, so in drag racing, there's really no path for young racers other than junior dragsters, which really don't teach you a whole lot. Um, you can't really do anything until you're 16 years old. So my dad's thought was with dirt racing, we could race go-karts and micro sprints. And then at, at age 16, if we wanted to transition back into drag racing, we always could. Mm -hmm. And just the way our path took us when we were, you know, in, in our, our teenage years, you know, sprint car racing had a path that really seemed like it was going to be a career path for us. So we stuck with drag race or stuck with dirt track racing, excuse me, but I was actually just watching the Bradenton first round. So oh, yeah. um, I love drag racing. Anytime I can go to the races, I'll go for sure. But um, I feel like drag racing is, is pretty much tied for me with, with dirt racing is, is the most exciting sport for sure. So um, I love it anytime I can go. And, and, and if I ever get the chance to step in one, I, I probably would. would so. Yeah. No. So aside from that, obviously uh, you dabbled in late models and ARCA a little bit. Yep. Um, and you had said that you wanted to go NASCAR racing. Obviously, you're here at World of Outlaws race tonight. What is that adjustment and like maybe your goals and dreams have evolved over time? I can tell you this is where I want to be the rest of my life for sure. So um, I, I, you know, put it lightly, I, I sucked pretty bad in the pavement side of things. I, I don't know if it was something I, my, my heart wasn't quite into, but when I found myself, you know, at an ARCA race watching Dirt Vision on my phone, I, I kind of realized that this wasn't the path I wanted to go. And at the time, Toyota was really supportive of it. They gave us some 410 engines to run shortly after that and um, still have, have friendship with those guys. But it just didn't didn't fit me. I feel like I'm, you know, kind of a, an outgoing person, don't really be like to told, don't really like to, you know, be told what to do. So yeah. um, sprint car racing is <laughs> the best place to do that. So the guys I race for now are awesome. I really enjoy racing with them with KCP and um, have become really good friends. It's my, my fourth year running the car and time has flown by. So, um, you know, I, I really enjoy where I am and, and, and being happy is, is a big part of it too. Yeah. Well, I get to cover drag racing a little bit. And so I have one other question about that. Have you ever gotten to like warm up a top field dragster or you know, anything? With, uh, with Austin racing now full time and, and getting a ride in Robert Heights car, I'm going to try to talk him into doing that. I don't want to touch anything. I just want to sit there. You, you do everything and I'll just sit there and, and let it idle. So. Yeah, man, it's intense. Like going to those races and you walk by the pits and they're warming them up and yep. like all the the air is like, I've teared up so yeah, many times. Like yeah. it's, it's an intense feeling. So how does your brother fit into this? Because he obviously is a sprint car racer. So yeah, so he's actually flying to Tampa today. He's going to take James McFadden's spot. McFadden's visa got messed up or not approved. So he's going to race the Roth car at East Bay and I believe Golden Isles as well. So, um, you know, he, he's been super supportive over my career. I think sometimes he's happier when I win than, than I actually am. So, um, you know, he kind of, in a way, you know, paved the way for me with my dad's race team, with me and micro sprints and getting motors and cars and stuff figured out kind of when I was already ready to step into a fast race car. So, um, you know, he drove for Roth, I drove for Roth. We've taken a very, very similar step. And with him having two kids now and being married and being in my mom's business, kind of, you know, it was time for him to, to you know, be an adult sort of, I guess you could say, and kind of go home and, and take over the family businesses and stuff, which I, I know he enjoys being home with his kids and stuff, but he always wants to race out here for sure. Yeah, you mentioned he gets, you know, maybe more excited than you do. I don't know if this, I'm sure this is typical across the board for racers, but do you feel like you're pretty hard on yourself when it comes to, yeah. even if you won, you're like, I could have done this and this and this different. For sure, I can I can tell you I've never run a perfect race or a perfect lap even for that. So um, definitely being my 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 own you know worst worst critic is uh, is tough sometimes. It's hard to you know feel satisfied I guess when you win a race, but um, I feel like I'm I'm kind of on the verge of, of being in that top three to top five every night. So once I get there, you never know. I mean, look at Donnie Schatz. Obviously, he's not happy with with he, he's you know shouldn't say he's not happy, but he's not done with his career yet. You know, he's won like I said hundreds of races, Knoxville. Gold Cup, National Open, you name it, he's done it. So um, for him to still be out here either, that means there's something wrong with him or, or he actually, you know, just wants to win as many races as he can. Yeah. So well, that's the, that's really the big difference between, like, settling for something and just being average or, like, really wanting to be one of the greats and always pushing for more, even if you are winning. So with that, you know, as far as, like, preparation goes and, you know, all that goes into racing, like, so many different variables, are there certain, like, maybe, like, mental preparation aspects you do or, like, physical, like, do you work out or how do you prepare for a a race. Yeah, workout for sure. Peloton's actually become a, a big part of my life. I know the the all the lovers of Kendall Tool and, and all the, the Peloton <laughs> workout girls and guys. So um, Peloton plug. Yep, exactly. Yep. I should get a sponsorship from that. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So Hot sauce and Peloton. Yep. I actually started started talking to a sports psychologist um, middle of last year and I feel like just he, he didn't know anything about racing and, and he's uh, he's helped me quite a bit just getting kind of a an outside viewpoint on things when I explain something to him, you know, a heat race or a feature, he'll stop me and say 
so what what exactly is a heat racer a feature you know so being able to explain that to someone new and giving a whole outside you know perspective that he has on it has helped for sure um but man these, these guys are so mentally tough i feel like now especially we have all the same equipment if you can get yeah. one or two percent better you know on the mental side of things and not make one or two mistakes in the race you're going to win that race yeah well that's like when i talk to whether i'm talking to co-workers or friends or whatever or just in general like the technology and the quality of equipment just over the past five years has evolved so much For sure. and everybody has good stuff so yeah, really what it comes down to i mean the driver still mattered like 10 years ago but it makes it, it's a, an even bigger differentiator yeah. now For sure. so well, was, doing all that you can yeah no i was that was actually one thing i was going to ask you is like when it comes to obviously this 86 race season it's famous for you know the gruel and yep. grueling grind how do you mentally survive that you know like last year how did you mentally survive that and then this year do you feel maybe more prepared for that just kind of night in night out making sure you're not too hard on yourself i think the biggest thing is is the support system with the race team matt barbara and, and brett nearing being the owners they uh matt's worked on race cars for a long time and and when we left florida the first time to come back we we sat down me him my crew chief and, and just looked at the film and said how, how do we get better it wasn't pointing the finger it wasn't you're an idiot or, or we need to fire somebody it's how do we get faster next time we come down here because we're coming to the same racetrack and we started on the pole actually that time running second and, and broke a crank trigger so um really came back didn't get the result we expected or, or we wanted but we were substantially faster the next time than we, when we were the first time so um i don't know i think the biggest thing is leaving the the night behind you whether you've won or whether you've run 20th you know you you, you win last night the track doesn't know you anything tonight we're all on an even playing field now so um just just not dwelling on, on a bad night or a dumb mistake you might make i think the worst thing you can do is is not let those nights go mm -hmm.